always great to introduce Jim Justice. Uh, this is the 46th symposium, uh, as I mentioned this morning, and he's probably been to more of them. Well, he's been to as many of them as I have, I guess, or almost, and uh, so uh, but certainly more than most of you all in the room have been. This guy doesn't, uh, it, I've never heard him say, I can't do something. He does everything with strong faith and, and just a great honesty. He, uh, last year, if you remember when he visited with us, he talked about hope, and that was his higher opportunity pursued every day. He continues to believe that and continues to do that. And since he was here last year, what he's done is he championed the biggest road bond issue in the history of the state of West Virginia. And you're seeing cones everywhere across West Virginia with the roads being worked on. And he made sure that the teachers and the public employees got a much deserved raise. And he and his folks jumped in with General Foyer and made sure that the RISE program was doing what it was supposed to do, and that's take care of the victims of the big flood on the Greenbrier River when those people needed so much relief and help. And today, we'll probably talk about Jim's dream, which he did in the state of the state. And that's where he's going to tackle this drug problem we got in the state with the same vigor and energy that he does everything else. He, uh, as you all know, he, he grew up in Beckley, graduated from Woodrow Wilson, got a, uh, went to Tennessee on a golf scholarship, and got an MBA from Marshall. He grows more corn and the sweetest corn I've ever had uh, east of the Mississippi. He's mined coal in three states, sold it all across the world. He's done golf courses and hotels. He brought the Greenbrier back to its grandeur and its southern hospitality that we all remember so well. So, but more importantly, Jim has a wonderful wife, Kathy, who I hope most of you all know, and she's our first lady now. His son, Jay, and his wife, Catherine, and his daughter, Jill, who was president of the Greenbrier, and her husband, Adam. And now he's a grandfather, the 19-month-old. Well, here he is. He thinks that coal miners ought to be as proud as I'd been here to maybe more of the symposiums than you, and crying out loud, that put me like older than dirt, but, uh, but anyway, I have been a long time, and uh, my family's been in the coal business forever. You know, I've, I've said many, many, many different times that, uh, you know, and you get tired of me saying this, but I want you to always remember about that little frog in his pond. And if he's not proud of his own pond, he's not much of a frog. We're a natural resource state, and we should be really proud of ourselves in many, many different ways. A lot of times, and I said it a long, long time ago, and I just am taking off on what Bill said, but you know, the. Uh, the farmers in Iowa City, Iowa, or, you know, Cedar Rapids, or wherever it may be, they're really, really, really proud, and the community really proud of the fact that they grow corn in Iowa. You know, a long, long time ago, the oil producers in Houston and all and through Texas, the same thing. And many, many, many times throughout the years, the decades, you know, I can remember what I always called were the four horsemen in my life, and that was my dad, Tracy Hilton, Buck Harless, and Lawson Hamilton. They were always together, and they absolutely, so many times they looked at one another and said, why is it that the public, what is it about the coal industry 
or what we're doing that the public doesn't really identify with and come to and love because all of us are so giving and they were. All of us want nothing whatsoever to do with something that's unsafe or all of us want absolutely to never damage the environment. We have to mine coal. For crying out loud, why is it that the public doesn't gravitate to us? Well, a lot of times our messaging just isn't as good as it needs to be. Now we've worked a lot on that and we've gotten better. But today, let me just, let me just talk about the things at hand right now. First of all, when I got here a couple years ago, things were pretty doggone tough. And I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, but I'm a business guy and I've said it in the state of the state, I've said it over and over, but uh, this, thing, this state was bankrupt. I, anyway, you cut it. I don't care how, what you say, what you do, dead on her back. The other flip side of it is this, is in the, I guess way back in the primaries, you know, I really felt like, now, you know, it was cautious optimism, but I felt like things were going to get better, you know, on the coal side. I felt like, you know, the, the, maybe the underdeveloped countries, you know, were beginning to really move on their electric grid and there was a real possibility of exporting thermal coal. And then as we exported more and more and more thermal coal, then our utilities here would have to pay more dollars. And at the end of the day, Lo and behold, it happened. And so today we have some easing of regulations. That's great. We've got to where coal and West Virginia are maybe not bad words. You know, we had to really go out and try to work hard to change our image. You see, West Virginia, if, people, if you said West Virginia, so often people thought backward and ignorant and behind and all the bad stuff. Today, you say West Virginia, and a lot of people that are in the know are going to say, maybe the diamond in the rough we missed. You know, some way, somehow, coal has always been there for us, but some way we have just never appreciated it to the level that we should have. Now, today, things are better. I can't assure you beyond a doubt that things are going to continue to be great for years and years and years to come, but things are better. And there's a lot of coal miners back to work. And the multiplier effect of one coal job, one coal job, is just astronomical. You know, that's why I continue to promote this industry, promote us as West Virginians. Now, West Virginia's better too today. You know, we, we developed a strategy that was just as really just as simple as mud, but all the good ideas are just that. All the good ideas, I always give credit to the good Lord and I'll take the bad ones, but the good ideas always end up the ones that everybody sits back and says, well, I could have thought of that, but they didn't. They just plain didn't. What did we do? We came out and said, we've got to create an instantaneous job. Well, how do you do that? Well, the only really instant job that was there for this bankrupt being was the possibility of letting all the road jobs, all of them, you know, and creating all kinds of instant jobs. Well, we did it. We did it. And we did it a whole lot by your help. We did it by 73% of the vote. It's unbelievable. Everybody kept telling me, Justice, you're crazy. The biggest road bomb referendum ever in this state was 500 million and you're going to pass 3 billion? There's no way. But we did it. And not only did we do it, everybody along the way said you're going to have to raise more taxes. We didn't do that at all. Not one dime. So, now, that jump kicked us in some way. Now, the next thing is we made a commitment to education, did we not? Now, when we made the commit commitment to education, we basically put a stake in the sand and said, West Virginia, this backward, ignorant, behind state, are you kidding me? 
they're going to make an absolute investment in education and look at it that way. And then what happens? All of a sudden, the world starts perking up and looking. Then we make a commitment to our veterans. And absolutely, now the world's even perking up looking anymore. And then all of a sudden, the numbers start working. And here the numbers are starting to really percolate. Now, if we're going to continue with the numbers percolating, then we've got to do more. And we've got to keep it just rolling the way we're going. We've got to have more coal production. We've had, got to have more ideas. So I go off to President Trump and I say, Mr. President, I got a plan. I got a plan of how you can absolutely you know, promote and utilize coal, the eastern coal fields, the central app and northern app coals, and absolutely take this thing off. Now, he's been re really receptive to that idea. And that idea was basically just this, to preserve the eastern coal fields and the eastern power grid and not threaten it, basically we've got to be in a position to develop some level of subsidy that would be paid to the utilities. Nothing to do with you guys. But at the end of the day, it would ensure great, great, great production of our eastern coal field. Now, he, we haven't done it. And the reason we haven't done it is, frankly, to tell you the honest truth, the reason we haven't done it is one thing. And that is steam coal 75 or $78 a ton. You know, if it would be $45 a ton, you would have seen, you would have seen action very quickly. Now, so the long and the short of it is we need more coal produced in West Virginia. You know, from the standpoint of the highball side, and I know a lot about this stuff, guys. I mean, this is what we've done. You know, from the highball side, I mean, absolutely, I don't see any stopping it. I don't see any stopping it whatsoever. From a, a mid-ball side, I don't see any stopping it. From a low-ball side, there's always a concern that there may be, there could very well be too much production, even today. And so from a low-ball side, I'd say there's, there's, there's areas to be a little concerned, still real good. But from, from high-ball and mid-ball, I think we're good to go. From the standpoint of the foreseeable future, on the thermal side, I think we're good to go. Now, so let's go back and let's think about this stool here just one second. Now this stool is tested and it's really strong because it's got a load on it right now. But I can tell you that the legs to my stool in West Virginia are just this. You had to create instant jobs, that's the roads. You had to some way bring the, our base industry back, and that's you guys. We had to absolutely promote gas and do the right things in, in regard to gas, that's great. We had to work on education, and whether it be higher ed, or higher ed or high tech or diversification in any way, absolutely. Tourism in West Virginia ought to explode, and it has. Now, but it's only exploded like poof. What we needed to do is explode like an atomic bomb because West Virginia has so much to offer as far as tourism and we're working it every single day. We had to make a real commitment to our veterans and we did. And absolutely now we're having all kinds of neat things happen with our veterans. But the last part of the stool was just this. We still don't really have a workforce in West Virginia. We don't. We still have a real struggle with people passing a drug test. We know it. We know that's absolutely true. Now, we have an addiction issue that cost this state more money than Carter's got liver pills, my dad would say. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to just say today that Things are better. Things are okay in my world. I can go to Wendy's this afternoon, and I mean things are okay. Or are we going to try to really do something about it? I think now's our opportunity. That's why I came up with Jim's dream. Everybody's had a time at bad at this, but not me. I'm a guy that dreams really big. I'm a guy that truly believes we can make a dent in this terrible epidemic that's cannibalizing us. Now to do that, 
What I think you've got to do is you've got to do all the bases all at one time. You've sure got to have treatment. You've sure got to have some level that people can go. A lot of people can't afford to go. And what do they do? When they go, if they go, right as soon as they get out, they go right back. And the reason they go right back is there's no opportunity or there's no job. A lot of people absolutely have committed some level of crime and it's not a violent crime in any way. We've got to have some way for them to have a pathway to get away from this terrible addiction that they have. In addition to that, we've got to have the training component to train them for you. And on top of all that, I think we have to have the training component to be able to train any and all those that don't have a drug problem. So, Jim's dream encompasses every bit of that. Jim's dream says, from the vocational people that are being trained, we've got to be able to train them to do something. We, we, can't, we can't train them in a pickup truck and expect them to drive a 785 rock truck. It isn't gonna happen, it's just not gonna work. I've seen my son out on one of our surface mine jobs. I've been there when a guy drives up with his wife and two kids in the back, gets out, he's probably 20 years old, and absolutely he'll do anything to have a job. He's driven in the mud and everything else to be able to get there, and that kid is as clean drug-wise as he can possibly be, and he'll work his tail off, and the first question I ask him is, do you have any experience? And he says, no. And what can we do? What in the world can we do? I know some of you are trying to do training programs within your organizations, but, but at the end of the day, you're going to train 50. We need to train 5,000, and then 5,000 more. So, I'm telling you, we're in our infancy. There's no point in going any more de in any more detail than that, but I'm on it. I am flat on it. The last thing I'd say is just this. I came up with a thing in the state of the state on the, on the, from the standpoint of building lakes within West Virginia. Now, now, Donald Trump, I mean, two nights ago, I was sitting at the house and it's 9.30 and Donald calls and, and I look at my little flip phone and it says unavailable, well, I know who it is. And he says, Big Jim, how you doing? And on and on and on. And he says, he said, you know, I decided to just delay the State of the Union. And he said to me, he said, uh, you think I made a good decision on that? And I'm thinking to myself, you know, he is a real friend. Because why in the world would the President of the United States ask me if he made a good decision on that? You know, but the long and the short of it is he is our friend. He is our friend. And absolutely, as time goes forward, he's going to do an infrastructure program within our country that's going to blow everybody's doors off. I think there's real possibility on all kinds of fronts, whether it be the idea of maybe us developing some lakes. We don't need hydroelectric power here, but maybe that's the, the thing that we can, can have the component that satisfies maybe the environmental community which I would be for, and, and, and that's great. But we need the recreational, we need the tourism, we need the development, we need those things. West Virginia is so ripe for that, it's unbelievable. But the other thing we need is we need to stop these awful floods. You know, the worst thing in my life I've ever been through, ever in my life, never have I been through anything like the flood of 2016. You know, not only devastated the Greenbrier, but when you're out there finding bodies on the golf course, that's pretty tough stuff. So nevertheless, I commend you in every way. I love you with all my soul. There's nobody on the planet that's gonna defend your industry any more than I. I've lived it. I owe my whole life to coal. I do, I really do. I grew up playing in a coal bin a lot of times at my grandma, grandfather and grandmother's house, you know, on both sides. My grandparents on my mom's side never had indoor plumbing. You know, dad was an only child, an only child. 
I can remember my grandmother, and she was about 5'2", and just, you know, a small lady, always stuck on on. That's probably where I got a lot of this stuck on on deal I've got, but I some way missed her 5'2", and frail thing. But my dad was a big-chested guy, played a little football for Purdue, wasn't any superstar, but a big-chested guy and strong and tough and tough on me. My best man at my wedding. I miss him more than you'll ever know in a billion years. You know, I can remember just like it was yesterday, and I've told this story over and over, but it's true. I was in front of his desk, and I was probably, you know, I was. I was really skinny at one time, and then I grew another body. But his arms were bigger around probably than my legs. And I looked at Dad. I was standing in front of his desk. I probably had cut off jeans on and who knows what. I was probably 18 years old, and he was sitting there. I'll never forget he had a tie on, a shirt, and his sleeves rolled up. And I said, Dad, there wasn't anything I could do. No, it was the wrong, wrong answer. About that time, I kid you not, the whole desk exploded as he jumped across from his seat across the desk and grabbed me by the shirt and slammed me down on the desk. This is true. And he said, damn you, there's always something you can do and you better damn well always remember that. Well, that's how I've lived my life. And truly, that's, what, that's what I, the way I think. And so when I took this job, sheesh, there was nowhere to turn. All the easy stuff, all the low-hanging fruit was gone. It's better. This state is much, much, much better. Your industry, my industry is much better. We've got to preserve that and absolutely perpetuate more and more and more growth. You do so much good, it is unbelievable. Unflat believable. Absolutely, your just giving is just off the chart. But I've said it, and I'll end by just saying this. I congratulate all those that are receiving the safety awards, the Mountaineer Guardian Awards. I congratulate, you know, all those from Miners Health Safety and Training that are giving those awards today. I congratulate all of those that are receiving the Reclamation Awards, and I don't know if Austin's here, but our great leader at DEP, and DEP's doing a great job, and I hope to goodness that they're working with you and working with you in a good way because we can coexist. We can mine coal and do it the right way. And you absolutely are testimony to that and the award you received today. So I could never ever thank you enough again for all you do. It's a good day in West Virginia. There's better days to come. God bless you, thank you for having me. Thank y'all.